Hello everyone. I am Amit Mishra, Vice President Marketing from Vassar Labs. I welcome you to into our today's webinar, which is on land use intelligence system for city infrastructure and asset monitoring. Today we will be talking about how technology is shaping the future where we live in, how these things, the AI, remote sensing, are providing us latest data points, more and more insights on our earth, and how these things are empowering us to make day-to-day -day decisions towards a sustainable development. So in this webinar, we will be spending one hour starting for the introduction part. Then we will learn about Wasser Labs and the platform, which is Land Huge Intelligence Solution, followed by a case study where uh, the platform has been implemented in a city and that city has been uh, acting proactively in terms of monitoring its assets, reclaiming the compromised land and how these things go on we will will learn more in detail followed by that we will learn from planet what are the technologies uh, we are using right now in, in remote sensing space and uh, what kind of data sets are available for us for advanced analytics next is from microsoft we will learn what kind of uh, you know infrastructure is now available to us so that these kind of applications are possible and then we will be having QA from all of you, and we will be doing an interactive session. We will be talking to each other, and we will be concluding the session for today. So we will have a simple uh, protocol. Any questions you people have during the webinar, just put into a Q&A or chat box. And any concerns you will have in the QA during, please uh, raise your hand, and then we can uh, you know, have an interactive discussion around as well. So with that, I would like to introduce the panel today. So in our panel, we have uh, Mr. Lakshmi Prasad Putta, who is uh, founder and CEO of Wasser Labs. So Prasad is a batch trapper from IIT Madras with the post graduation from MIT. He has uh, been a serial entrepreneur. He has worked in RFID, shaping the entire uh, you know uh, technology around the RFID system and how this has been implemented in today's world. We see everywhere we go, like you know on toll and supply chain. It's a pretty common in, common implementation which he did, and he had. Uh, built two companies in the USA, which has been further acquired by NYSE listed firms. And then he started his journey towards uh, implementing technology for social good in India. And with that, it st we started at Wasser Labs with focus on primary sectors, which is water, agriculture, and sustainable development. Then we have uh, Mr. Hari from Microsoft. Hari is, uh, Hari is leading the team of Azure Data and AI specialist. And he focuses on public sector, education, ITAs, and unicorn accounts. He is responsible for empowering Azure data service adoption and digital transformation to empower sustainable development and have their client achieve the digital growth strategy. Then I have uh, Mr. Partha Pratim Ghosh from Planet. He is an alumni of International Space University and had several publications in national and national journals and conference. He provides technical expertise in driving business opportunity. He had 16 years of experience in multi-spectral, hyperspectral remote sensing, SAR, infer, interferometry, geoanalytics, and drone with various global organizations. He will be talking about how these kind of technologies are shaping the future. And then I will be complimenting all our speakers today in terms of moderating the session and helping them to interact with all of you. So with that, I will give you a little bit background on Wasser Labs. So we have started in 2014. We currently, we have around 180 plus uh, peers. We are uh, primarily headquarters in India, but we have uh, you know, location, we have, we are present in other locations as well, like USA in India, we have presence in Hyderabad, Delhi, Vijayawada. And what we have did is we have, we have used the latest technologies to solve the problems in primary sectors. So how it works is like we have a data platform which basically ingests data from various sources. Then it, we have AI ML layer. Then we have we provide the data as insights and ultimately providing decision support system. So if we compare from last many years, so we had the science. The science part was there like AI, neural networks. These had been around from 1980s. It's, it's been in research. It's been, uh, you know, quoted in various papers. Various work has been done in terms of how to use that in our practical life. But this has not been possible until now that the real life applications we have to start seeing it. The one reason behind it is that it requires a huge infrastructure. So it requires computing power, it requires space, 
it requires infrastructure around it and those were not available so in the in the recent advancement of technology it's been available that we have satellite data available with us we have computing power available with us and all of this technology advancement it's shaping the way we live in our current world so now we have more data points we have more computing powers and we have the complete infrastructure around us just to give you one understanding so any phone you have any smartphone which you have right now in hand has more computing power compared to all the computers put together which were in apollo apollo mission which basically sent the first human to the moon so that's the kind of computing power available to us right now so with that power wasser lab is trying to reshape the the way we think about sustainable development by empowering authorities to understand what's happening on the field gain more and more insights about the uh, the earth surface changes through ai about more and more data points the behavioral patterns in case of farming in case of river water bodies what are the things happening around us and what it means because with the verge of climate change the urbanization the demand stress on the agriculture system the things are changing in a very fast pace and that's where these technologies play a very pivotal role so with that now i would like to invite mr prasad who will take us through the understanding of how this system uh, how this system has been developed what are the potential use cases and how this system has been implemented in uh, one of the city in odisha and what were the outcome so with that i will stop here and i will invite prasad prasad please take over and you know uh, provide our audience insight about these things thank you thank you amit you can run the slides uh, first of all good afternoon uh, uh, everyone uh, i am prasad putra as amit has uh, said uh so the main topic of uh, today's discussion uh is how we'll be uh how we are using high resolution satellite imagery and ai to help identify new buildings that are coming up in urban local bodies or cities and how that information is helping the government either to increase the tax revenue or to clear of the encroachments so we'll talk about that in a few minutes uh but before we go there i just want to give you uh, a sense of some of the use cases uh that our customers are actually uh, uh doing uh leveraging uh satellite data or aerial data and uh, ai right so first uh, you know um, use case on the left if you see green cover monitoring uh he's an example of a customer who really wants to understand so it's a big you know uh, over r plus uh, how uh, the customer wants to understand the green cover index within a city or by each ward and why is that as you can imagine as part of the sustainable development goals green cover and having you know kind of parks and living you know uh, playing spaces and gathering spaces is one of the very important factors of sustainable development index. So this customer basically want to understand how the city's green cover is improving or not. And basically here we have leveraged um, you know, aerial imagery along with AI to help them understand not only what's happening today, but how is the index growing uh, over a period of time, right? Uh, second use case you see on the right is again, a customer of ours who wants to understand uh, the agricultural uh, growth or what type of crops uh, are they sowing within the command area of a certain reservoir, right? So there's a customer where they want to understand the growth or expansion of the command area or improvement of the command area or improvement of the tail end um, in a command area as they basically bring in more water into the reservoir. How is the command area and how the farmer's welfare improving over a period of time? Again, here we have leveraged, uh, you know, uh, satellite imagery and applied a specialized AI algorithm on top of that to classify uh, this thing to several crops, not only, you know, paddy, non-paddy, but also within non-paddy, several clusters of crops to help them understand what is the wet versus ID cropping pattern and what is the overall uh, cropping index and the GVA that that particular command area actually is generating. He's a customer of ours, um, again, a big customer of ours uh, who uh, has implemented a large uh, lift irrigation scheme, right? And they want to understand what is the uh, uh, water that is available in the my irrigation tanks on ongoing basis, every, you know, five days or every uh, 12 days, how much water actually is available in the my irrigation tanks 
uh, so that they know if they need to supply more water through the lift irrigation scheme to that my irrigation tank to support the irrigation requirements of the command area of the irrigation tank, right? So we're actually using both, uh, you know, kind of uh, hydrogen start imagery as well as SAR data to understand the, you know, the uh, water uh, index and also estimate how much water is available in that area. And on the right uh, is customer powers who basically uh, want to understand what is the crop survival rate, um, you know, after uh, initiative has been made to actually do the plantation, right? So actually using again uh, AI, we're able to estimate number of uh, trees or plants that survived and grown into trees as opposed to something that are basically fared off or fared off. So the example of customer again using sand imagery to understand uh, because of forest fire, how much area has been uh, you know kind of destroyed, and how is that area rejuvenating over a period of time, right? That's that's the thing that they want to understand. And um, you know, as a customer, you know, who want to understand what is the uh, progress in the gas pipeline they're actually building through a very densely you know kind of uh, wooded area where you know it's very hard for them to understand you know, how much work they have completed so we actually you know help this customer uh, by leveraging satellite data to say how much work is actually ongoing work has been completed again this is i mean we can and here's an example i think uh, thanks to planet they share this imagery right uh, again you know if you look at defense huge potential and huge requirement on how satellite imagery can be used to monitor sensitive areas right but we are seeing this thing news every day about you know any um, you know incursion or any you know, disturbance that's happening worldwide. They would use satellite imagery to basically say how much uh, impact is happening, what is the you know kind of incursion, what is the response, so on and so forth. Again, I'm just giving you a few use cases, but we can spend next couple of hours uh, me giving you examples of customers using satellite imagery and intelligence on top of that to help drive better decision making and faster decision making and more importantly non uh you know uh influence decision making uh into the you know administrations right so here's a so the the main thing uh uh that we're going to talk about today is how can satellite imagery be used high resolution satellite imagery and artificial intelligence algorithms be used to help governments or large landowners or companies help identify if there are any changes in their land use and if the change is authorized change or unauthorized change. So we're actually going to talk about how the technology can help customers with that specific problem, right? So look at the unauthorized land use and this is just a study I'm basically giving you from India and same statistics actually hold worldwide, right? For example, uh, the statistics is uh, about 7% of government lands are encroached in India. That's a staggering number. Roughly 10% is actually encroached. 1.2% uh, of forest land, I'm sure that in reality, that probably number is more, 2% of forest land is encroached by either urban settlements or by for agriculture and other purposes, right? About 18,000 water bodies, uh, which used to be water bodies before, are no longer water bodies because they are either encroached to grow paddy in there or plantations in there or encroached to basically build something in there, right? So these are staggering numbers in terms of how public assets are actually uh, encroached uh, and used for non fit for purpose, right? Not, not for, for a different purpose. And that has impact on several things. For example, look at the you know, flood situation that happened. It happened because the drains are occupied, right? So again, a lot of issues that basically happen in developing uh, cities, right, unauthorized land use um, poses a challenge in two ways. One is if a building is built and the tax authorities don't know about it, they lose revenue, right? That's a big problem, right? Urban local bodies already are um, stressed for revenue. So if the building is built or building is expanded or one more floor is built and it doesn't come on tax regime, they actually lose tax revenue. Second thing, Lands that are meant for certain purposes, parks or drains or water bodies or government lands, if they encroach, now that land is no longer available for the purpose they're meant or earmarked for. So those two actually are big challenge. So today, if you look at, you know, all of us live through this thing every day, right? Today, how are these encroachments identified? Either you or I or some responsible citizen 
will make ad hoc complaint to the department or the police saying that somebody's encroaching this land. Or a field officer will have to go survey, you know, once a month and basically give a report again, okay, these bodies are encroached or these things are encroached. And by the time these things are identified, it's already too late to make a change, right? And after the reporting also, there's no structured process today, which is tracked and monitored to take the encroachment removal to its logical conclusion, right? That's a problem that basically all our customers talk about us today. So what we have built, you know, the, again, a lot of credit goes to uh, Bhuvaneshwar authorities. They basically really are pioneers in getting this thing done, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Secretary Sir, uh, Sanjeev Chopra Sir, Dr. Malik, Mishra Ji, Parida Ji, all the people from the Bhuvaneshwar, uh, you know, uh, uh, system really helped, you know, in conceptualizing and building the system along with us. So what we've done, we have built this Lewis platform, which is land use intelligence system, a platform where you can give any satellite imagery for any city or any urban local body or a water body or a drain or a river or whatever it is. You can basically give that satellite imagery point of interest or area of interest and through high resolution satellite imagery and through AI, we're able to continuously monitor those area and automatically identify where new buildings or new changes are coming up automatically. There's no manual intervention. These alerts pop up saying that there are 15 changes that have happened in the last month, right? Then we have built a smart workflow, a mobile-based workflow where all these alerts go uh, to the concerned officers. So imagine you have 15 alerts and three alerts belong to ward one, one alert belong to ward two and five alerts belong to ward three. Only the three alerts will belong to ward officer one goes to ward officer one. So basically it gets distributed based on the responsibilities and the ward officer basically will validate the alerts. And if the ward officer doesn't validate the alert for three days as part of the SLS, service level agreement workflow, the alert is escalated to the next authority. If the next authority doesn't act for three days, it gets escalated to the next authority. So basically because of the SLA built into the system, there's actually a very good response from the department in terms of going, validating the alert, collecting the, uh, the information, the videos, the pictures, the documents, uploading all that into the system so that the legal process can basically give the order to clear off the alert, right? So that's kind of what we have done, you know, uh, so the way it happens is uh, we actually worked very closely with uh, Planet. We get the SAD imagery, we download the data for the area of interest that we have. We pre-process data, so to make sure the data is all in a uh, good format, make the data ready for analysis, and then it gets loaded into the system. And the AI algorithm gets triggered where it takes each satellite slice and basically does the AI algorithm and post-processing and basically gives you, okay, here are the 15 or 20 or 50 or 60 alerts, changes that happened from last month to this month, right? So basically this is what it does it, it classifies the image into buildings and roads and land and water bodies. It does a comparison of current image for last couple of months image to see if the building that happened now, did that building exist last month? Did that building exist the previous month? Based on that, it basically says, yeah, this is a new building or this is an existing building. And then based on that, it basically raises alert to the concerned officer to actually start uh, getting more information and getting the you know alert figured out. So here's a quick video, a couple of minute video, just gives you uh, the great work done by the Bhuvaneshwar uh, team. Right? Just have a look. Thank you. 
Once, once we go through it, the alerts, once they're generated, they get shown onto a GIS platform where the department authorities uh, can look at them, validate the alerts. Then they get pushed to the mobile app. It basically both the Android and iOS based mobile app where the department user or the manager or the you know senior officer, they can log in, they can see the alerts are meant for them or escalations are meant for them. And they act on the alert, they can take a video, they can take pictures, they can take documents upload those things to actually as collaborative evidence for the alert. And then finally it goes for legal reviewal and then basically alert gets cleared. And then, and then there's the analytics dashboard that basically gives uh, all the department officers visibility into how many alerts are generated this month, by what, by a zone, how many of them are in what stage of completion, how many alerts are past the SLA, which needs to be addressed quickly. So all those things analytics are done so that there's a constant monitoring, not only of the land, but also the alerts to make sure the alerts are acted upon to take them to a logical conclusion. So this is just a workflow of how the AI uh, uh, is used. Essentially, what we're doing is we take an image, standard imagery, we do some pre-processing, and then through a uh, deep neural network-based uh, AI algorithm, uh, it's like a 14-layer neural network-based AI algorithm, it basically classifies the satellite imagery into different classes, different uh, uh, features. It will say, this is a building, this is a big building, this is a small building, here's a road, here's a park, here's a water body, here's a uh, agricultural land, or here's a barren land, right? It basically classifies so that we know all we care about is what is the building. The rest of them we care about for this special purposes. Then it basically looks at last one or two or three months. And the reason why we look at last one or two or three months is for in that specific area, last month may have cloud cover. So you can't see anything underneath that. So we actually look at last couple of months to see if there's a building that existed in that area in the last couple of months. If it is, then there's no new change. If there's not, then basically says there's a new change. It also looks at, okay, there's a small building that existed before. Now we have a big building. It also basically looks at other change. So it's not just saying there's a building or not, also looking at how big of a building there is today versus last time to see how, uh, you know, a addition has been made or some change has been made to the building. It also, there's a lot of post-processing algorithms that are built into it to look at the side view of the satellite imagery, talk to yourself, all those things are taken care of by the system so that, you know, you get alerts which are fairly good to act upon, right? Next, please. So finally, when the department officer gets it, this is kind of what they see. Okay, on March, this is kind of what it looked like. In April, this is kind of what it looked like. So clearly, the system says here's a new building that came up between March and April. So there's without any shred of doubt, you can say, okay, this is a change that happened, right? So now the department officer can go and say, you don't have anything last month. You have something this month. Is there a permission to actually build this building? Where is the permission? They you can do the full audit to make sure it's a valid building or not a valid building. So uh, this Lewis, uh, what I was just talking about, uh, just won the you know the best uh, or the gold award 
in excellence in adopting emerging technology for e-governance um, is actually uh, has been uh, given to uh, Mr. Sanjeev Chopra and Dr. Malik and uh, team uh, who actually you know spearheaded the initiative from Bhubaneswar uh, uh, Authority and is given by Central Minister and uh, you know the uh, technology uh, information technology minister of uh, Telangana. So just uh, if you look at below, there's some, a bit of stats that just gives you a sense of the value of a technology like this. So over a, I think over an 18 month period, uh, about 859 alerts have been generated by the system. So the system has three things. One, the system generates alerts through satellite data and AI. We also basically enable citizens to give their own alerts. The mobile app they can download, a citizen actually can report, crowdsource or report a new encroachment uh, in their neighborhood. Or a department official can actually go and report an encroachment in their neighborhood. So if you look at it, out of 859 alerts, about 700 alerts have been generated through AI. And 131 has been generated by citizen, and only 30 has been generated by department. So you can just see the value add of putting something like the system like this in place where nearly 80% plus of the alerts have been automatically generated by the system. And out of them, 512 alerts have been resolved as in the encroachment is removed, everything has been taken care of. That itself, this is again the numbers from the department, not from me, is about 250 crores of value. By spending a couple of crores, you get 250 crores of value. Right, and more importantly, you get the land that's meant for a specific purpose, repossessed by the government to actually use it for the purpose. Right. So let's what what the our client has to say, Mr. Prafulla Malik, who is a uh, CE for ORSAC, Odisha Space Application Center, who has been our partner in application in in developing the application. Let's listen to him. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much to. Yeah, opportunity for this uh, webinar uh, protection of the comment land using uh, satellite imagery and particularly planet land imagery which we receive on a monthly basis and thanks to the vasa lab team who are uh, designed the technical solution or the technical architecture for the entire project we sincerely believe that a high value government land of a city like say capital city of bhubaneswar is to be protected using satellite imagery. And each stakeholder should be involved in this entire project. So basically, we have three uh, sort of stakeholders. One is the administration, other is the people, and the last stakeholder is the technology environment. And using ATML, Basar Lab and our people, they're processing it. And using the mobile platform, the alerts are being sent to the concerned ward officer, right? Jurisdiction wise, and this is being attended to. One of the biggest challenge which you will be facing, like in the monsoon season, like we uh, we know that uh, optical images are blind to cloud. So also we are planning to have a SAR integration, like micro data integration, to this project, and for which our technology partner Basar Lab is working. What is the the thing that is driving what is the motivation we are very thankful to my government uh, my government has initiated a, an initiative called the 5t initiative that is uh, technology teamwork transparency and primary transformation so in this 3t this is involved with a, a program called mo sarka this my government and this is a project of gad department who are the owner of the Land of Bhubaneswar, and these lands are managed by the Bhubaneswar Development Authority and Bhubaneswar Municipal Corporation. And to address the unauthorized activities in a timely manner, so that Bhubaneswar city is, remains beautiful, planned, and is a citizen friendly. Even the citizens are also involved in this project. Without our government blessings or support, simply this is not possible. The credit goes to the entire credit goes to our Chief Minister, our Chief Minister is Naveen Patnaik Ji, and to our Secretary, GS Secretary, C. Sanjeev Chopra, and also the BMC Chairman, and everyone in the government, and also team of my scientists who have worked hard, and my technology partner, 
Sir Lang. And a special thanks to Mr. Lakshmi Prashad, who is my alumnus also from my Madras and a, a distinguished scholar from MIT. So, what are some of the uh, steps that uh, uh, WhatsApp, you, and the GA department have taken to ensure that the technology is put to good use? Yeah, this is a lot of handholding uh, is being taken place. Like we have provided the technological support at the department level, at the user level. A lot of training program we conduct, and this is a continuous operation. Like we have a WhatsApp group, we have a webinar, we have a, I mean, a physical training to the uh, people, and this is on the mobile platform. So the administrators they know that what is happening to their alerts, and every citizen also he knows. Suppose he has given an alert regarding on unauthorized activity on the government land. He knows if, when it is, what is the status. So when we take on a technology initiative, sir, typically the first question that get asked uh, of any uh, department is what is the value of the solution, right? How much value do you think the department would have got by implementing system like this? See, like, like this, if you go, roughly you can say one acre land will be costing around 20 crore rupees. Yeah, uh, in Bhubanesh, you know, three million dollars. Yeah, three million dollars, and the entire TCO, entire TCO of this project per year, match to match, will be spending around one and a half crore. Yeah, so the one and a half crore is about twenty one thousand dollars. Yeah, so so this is the value. Uh, you know that, and and we are dealing with an AOI of two hundred fifty square kilometer, and it's a quite a huge uh, monster. So one dollar. One alert could call the could basically tell you the full value. Yeah, full value. Right. Already ten alerts have been resolved, and eleven alerts have been resolved. That itself can show the ROI. Uh, you know, in terms of uh, how this technology can actually happen to the government. Yeah. Yeah. This is the first kind of project in my state in which that AI and ML on the GIS platform is been done. I'm really thankful to the technological architect who have developed this. And the Tamil Lab people who have taken lots of initiative to give us the imagery. And thanks to Mr. Mahesh and thanks to Mr. Pratish, who are very uh, crucial in this project. And big thanks to NRSC also, if uh, we can share this webinar to them. Where our government is very, very thankful to NRSC for the timely delivery of the Tamil Lab imagery. So, thank you. Uh everyone for going through this video. So this is basically one of uh, the good work we have did here and we understood from all of, uh, you know, and mean that now we will have a second speaker from our side, who is uh, Mr. Pratim, Partha Pratim Ghosh, who is a good friend of us. And now the, all the application, what we have seen has been based out on high resolution satellite images. Without this, this has not been possible. So let's learn from Partha, how these technology images are procured, how, what kind of features they provide, and how they basically enable us in our day-to-day -day, uh, life. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm from Planet. And uh, as you know, Planet is an aerospace company which built, launch, and operate the largest constellation of satellite to image the whole Earth's surface on daily basis to make the change visible, accessible, and actionable. At Planet, we are working with more than 40 industries. And across the industry, we found that Getting the imagery in right time is the most critical part in the remote sensing. As we know, digital transformation across the globe created the big opportunity for artificial intelligence, machine learning, and IoT for asset monitoring using geospatial technologies. Today's business needs timely decision, but the inaccurate and outdated data may lead to lack of insight, inaction, and uninformed decision. So organization require not only the access to the data, but at the same time, need the proper tool to extract information from the data. So Earth observation imagery, as well as the right AI ML solution is the need of the time. Seeing these challenges at Planet, we have launched largest constellation of satellite. At this point of time, we have more than 200 planet scope satellites which are capturing the whole Earth's surface on daily basis with the pixel size 3 meter. It is multispectral and 8-band imaging. 
At the same time, we have 21 number of SkySat satellite, which are capturing the Earth's surface with 50 centimeter pixel size. And best part is that revisit is maybe daily or maybe Saturday. Here I'd like to mention, highlight one point that is in the traditional satellite, you will see the resolution difference between the panchromatic image and multispectral image is three to four times. For example, resolution of the panchromatic image is 50 centimeter, multispectral will be two meter. So that kind of difference is there. But at planet, we are capturing the multispectral imagery in submeter resolution. That means our multispectral imagery have more spatial details, which may help you more to extract the spectral information using image processing algorithm, including AI enable. Let me show you uh, some uh, example imagery as well as uh, some use cases. I'm going to show you uh, the Forest Research Institute in Dehradun, and it has been captured using SkySat imagery. This is auto rectified imagery, and you can see the vibrancy of the imagery and each and every details of the imagery is visible very nicely and very clearly. In the first week of December 2021, Indian Navy unveils the world's largest national flag in Mumbai. We saw this news and activated our SkySat satellite. And we got the imagery on 5th December, and we can see our national flag from the sky. So that's the kind of high frequency we have available. If we get the information today, we can capture the imagery and our users will get the imagery tomorrow. And not only this still imagery, we can capture the video from the sky as well. Now I'm going to demonstrate a video of uh, Delhi. Actually, it is Delhi and Gurgaon border. We can see the Gurgaon toll plaza is visible. Cars are moving. And uh, in the left side, international airports are there. And best part is that when we have captured the imagery at that time, one flight was moving, one flight was running on the runway. And that is that has also been captured. So in the similar way, any point of interest, we can capture the video and we can deliver it to our users. So that's the way we plan it well. Not only the steel imagery, at the same time, we can offer the video also from the sky. Let me show you some huge cases. Uh, I'll start with some construction monitoring that big uh, one of the massive construction was happening to uh, for a super stadium in California from 2017 to 2022. We have tracked the imagery. We have tracked the multiple phases of the construction and we have created this time lapse video where you can see how this transition of this land use changes are happening. In a similar way, any construction activity, maybe road, maybe building, or any land use changes or environmental changes that can be tracked very easily using our high frequent imagery. Let me move to Bhubaneswar, as Prasad has already mentioned. That is, we are the partner of imagery partner of Blue's project. And we are capturing the whole Bhubaneswar area every month. And Virtual Lab has developed a nice AIML solution and British authorities identifying the public land encroachment on a monthly basis. We have seen this video as well already. So this is uh, eight month imagery and we can see how this transition of the land use is happening for last eight, eight months. One middle, one building is raising so that land use, land use change can be identified. Moving to uh, national capital region, when the uh, re reconstruction of National Highway 24 was going on, this is the time when the National Highway reconstruction was going on, and we got the imagery just after completion of the National Highway reconstruction. So that's the way any activities, any construction activities, any, any modification activity that can be identified and that can be tracked. This image showing the normally busy street of Cannot Place, New Delhi, the central commercial district. And in the next image, we can see the decrease of traffic and other activities due to lockdown imposed because of this COVID-19 pandemic. Various agencies, including government of India, was monitoring the situation of lockdown uh, using Planet Sky Shot imagery on the regular basis. Use of satellite imagery is very critical for disaster monitoring that we know. Uh, disaster monitoring, disaster response, and mitigation. Maybe flood, maybe landslide, maybe fire, maybe earthquake. High frequent imagery is the key requirement. This is a very special use case related to Bishakha Patanam gas leak in um, uh, 2020 May. 
and we can see before gas leak imagery and we can see the after gas leak imagery and we can see that impact of gas leak is very clearly visible here and that kind of impact assessment is only possible when you have the high frequent imagery now uh, it's a very frequent question we face how to detect the change in the airport where situation are changing every hour yes at planet we have the solution we can capture the imagery multiple times in a day which may be up to five to seven times in a day not one time multiple times in a day so this is the imagery we have captured at morning 11 23 and next imagery of the same area we have captured at afternoon 1 44 pm and you can see the changes are very clearly visible one aircraft was visible in the previous imagery that aircraft is not visible in the afternoon imagery so five to seven times change can be detected using planet imagery here so as i mentioned we have uh, planet scope satellite we have sky set satellite at the same time we have uh, uh, rapid eye satellite also although it is retired but we have the complete uh, archive from 2009 onwards and using this all this satellite we are delivering the multiple product planet monitoring monitoring product means if you have the area of interest we can capture whatever the imagery we will capture in the next one year you will get access of all the imagery on your area of interest tasking means on demand capture for example you need the imagery of a specific date at specific time for example you need the imagery at morning 10 30 or you need the imagery at afternoon 1 pm or 3 pm we can capture and deliver to you that is tasking we have the base map option that is the creation of uh, time composite mosaic and deliver archive means whatever the imagery we are capturing that is available in the archive at any point of the earth surface we have more than 1500 imagery that can be a very good that stack a good stack of imagery can be used for the training sites of machine learning at the same time we have analytic feeds also our user can be benefited on that so we have seen some uh, sample imagery from planet and how this high frequent imagery can help your requirement please subscribe to our trial and see the change planet is bringing, bringing for you so that trial option is available anybody can uh, subscribe for this trial and see the uh, different changes happening in the planet so till if you have any question please write me back my email id is partha at planet.com and uh, i'll love to reply your email i love to get your queries so i'm handing over uh, the session to my next speaker uh, for the next part of the webinar thank you thank you all Thank you, Partha. That's, that's been really fascinating to see how the remote sensing thing is shaping up and how, how many times in a day we can actually see the earth around us and the changes which are coming to us. But yeah, uh, the well said that all of things would not be possible until, unless we have infrastructure in place to have this data. Uh, we need a lot of computing power to do that. And that's what uh, Microsoft brings to us. And we have uh, our next speaker, Mr. Hari, who will be basically walking us through the uh, the, the power of technology the infrastructure behind this uh, high compute requirements. Hurry over to you. Please uh, go ahead and let us know about how these things actually work in real life. Thank you. Hey, thanks. Uh, thanks, Amit. And uh, good afternoon to everyone. Um, and in fact, uh, I have an immense pleasure to be part of this particular webinar and uh, completely impressed the way Vasa Labs is changing the way the digital transformation, especially in the government land records part of it. Um, I think I'll, I won't uh, touch base or give more insights. I think I just wanted to touch base on three or four areas. And this is more critical in terms of uh, all the solution which we have discussed right now. I think there was a lot apps, which was core and very critical. Uh, you have the planet app, which is giving all the imaginary information, which is also more and critical for the entire solution to work, right? But the important aspect here is how this all can be made accessible and scale to the requirement um, for, for each and every specific projects, you have different set of requirements, right? How you can scale it across, right? And that's where exactly Microsoft is playing an important role. Uh, we are one of the technology platform provider here for these kind of solution providers, right? I'll, I'll quickly give you a little bit of insight in terms of, um, though you might have be aware of uh, various Microsoft solution, um, and you might have used a lot of those products from our side. Uh, for today's discussion, we just wanted to keep focus upon one of the solution area, which is what we call as the Microsoft Cloud offering, which is infrastructure to platform as a service, which we branded it as Azure. 
Now, what this uh, cloud platform does, it provides the beautiful apps, which was our lab is developing, right? You need those applications to be developed. You need an infrastructure to be hosted out of it. You need compute, you need storage, you need different kind of security parameters. We put it across in place, right? Just to give an example, like the images, which is coming across, maybe there will be a lot of sensitive images, which you need to classify. You don't want to give those sensitive information of images to defense related to defense. You don't want to expose it, right? So there are a lot of security related parameters which needs to be monitored upon. You also need to ensure that this security or those images are only visible to the government officials. It's not available in terms of the imaginary which is coming across to probably all the citizens, right? So there may be a leakage which may happen. So security is one of the key parameters which always needs to be <clears throat> looked upon. You also will have use cases where you get certain information of images coming from one source and over a period of time, government may also have certain other of images which may come from other sources. So you will look at ingestion of all these data, all these images to a common platform. And I think that's exactly where uh, you will need a little bit of multiple connectors from network technology standpoint to, uh, <clears throat> to ingest all those images, right? And that's where exactly we have solutions. We have technology provider. We can provide you all those capabilities around it. Uh, finally, uh, you also need all the solution to scale as it requires and probably after a scale is done, then probably you may have to decide whether, okay, I got so many images. Now these images are almost three years back. You may not need those images or you may love to archive those images and probably at a particular stage of time when your particular use case arises, you may have to go and look at those images, right? Now that's exactly also part of built of the solution from a storage capability perspective. Now, all this is what we call as infrastructure as a service model, which can scale to each and every requirement. And you pay to the respective, how much you're using, you pay for that, right? Now, on top of it is what we have built the platform capability, which is primarily in terms of you want to do a little bit of analytics of all these images. Uh, you want to also ingest data from camera sources, which is lying at the edge part of it. So we do have solutions available starting sorry, from the edge. Sorry, to, the... Harry, sorry sure. to interrupt. Your slides are not moving, actually. Sorry, I, I think I'll yeah, just... Yeah, yeah, yeah. thank cool. you. Uh, I'll just quickly uh, move to the next important point, and I think this is one of the important uh, aspects which uh, most of the government, um, in fact, customers whom we have been interacting is, how secure is it? Can I move my entire data workload towards uh, the Azure cloud? Is it protected? Do you meet all the compliance requirements from government entities' perspective? So just wanted to give a little bit of highlight in terms of we have three data centers live in India itself, so we have three data centers and it has been there for quite some time. We also have announced three more data centers in India. So right now we have three live and we have launching another three more data centers in India, which means that all the important data, what you're talking about, all the compliance, all the <clears throat> important images, which you're talking about will be residing in the specific data center location itself. So which means it meets most of the government regulation requirement from India perspective. And at this particular stage of time, we have various government entities in India itself who are running their production workload on Azure cloud. So this is just to give assurance in terms of what all compliance perspective, what all is specific requirement as such we meet, we cater to most of those requirements. Uh, also wanted to give a little bit of highlight in terms of how we make it much more secure. Now beyond uh, Microsoft Azure cloud, we may have been also aware of our uh, the mailing solution, the Teams, which is collaboration solution from our perspective. So if I look at any particular stage of time, Microsoft overall between our data centers, we see almost trillions and trillions of packets moving across from one region to another region. Now, with so much of packets moving across, we also get a little bit of perspective from a cybersecurity pers point of view, like where the anomaly is coming across, from where we are seeing certain packets emerging, which was not there previous prior to that. And if you have seen recent, um, uh, uh, recent, a geopolitical situation where you had Russia, you had Ukraine war and all, there are a lot of those hacking which started to happen, right? And one of those entities which got those visibility was also Microsoft. We were also able to go back and inform that these are some of those anomalies which we are detecting from the overall internet perspective. So this is another way to look at in terms of how we are protecting all the customers' information running out of our Azure data center, protecting it, also giving a little bit of warning in advance, like if we see any kind of anomaly happening, we just inform the customers, yeah, there is some anomaly which we have which we have observed in your platform please go and look at this particular aspects finally i just wanted to give a little bit of perspective on some of the standards which government of india has launched so meti has clearly given a mandate in terms of specific standards which cloud providers have to follow and microsoft azure platform we are catering and we are meeting to the meti standards 
to an extent that this particular uh, MAT standard, there is a regular set of audit which happens every duration time frame. In fact, it happens annually two times, and then probably we need to adhere to the newer and newer policy which comes across. So just to give a um, confidence to every customer who is using our platform perspective, we will ensure that what specific government guidelines are coming across, we will always try to meet for that. We not only meet the government, local government regulation guidelines, but also we try to meet the global guidelines, which is also very important for hosting any workload. I'll quickly switch gears and uh, give a little bit of portfolio of what Microsoft is doing from an AI standpoint. And this is also very important. Uh, just wanted to highlight a little bit in terms of the language keys, which is very, very critical for us from AI point of view. And languages are so critical, especially from India, where you have so many lang <coughs> languages spoken across each and every state. So if you have been familiar with Microsoft, we always have been enhancing our AI portfolio. Any product what you're looking from Microsoft perspective, we are trying to ensure that it's available for the regional languages part of it. If you have been familiar with the Office, uh, Microsoft Office, which is Word and all, you will start seeing that we have started to make it available in multiple languages, Indian languages itself. So this is one of the core focus area. If you have been familiar with Microsoft browser, you can use those browser for the local languages part of it. So those are some of those uh, path breaking technology shift which we are doing from our products portfolio perspective. And quickly on from a platform capability perspective, uh, most of the solutions what probably Vasar Labs was talking about is where you need those ML models, which is your artificial intelligence models, which the team is developing upon, has to be developed, right? So you need a platform for that. So we provide the development platform for the data scientists to create those models. And that's exactly one of the solution offering from Microsoft perspective. Beyond that, you will also look at in terms of if I want to detect a person's face itself, right? So some of the platform capability in starting from vision, even if you want to do any kind of specific search on all the data which is residing on your probably storage account itself, right? Those are inbuilt capability which we have built from a platform perspective. You will also look at a lot of those requests where you need to look at from a speech or language capability perspective, where you're looking at so much of images which is coming from various sources. Those images will be in different, different languages. You would look at what is written in English, you need to like to convert to a Uriya language, right? So translation is one of those use cases quite common in India. You would also look at in terms of some of those images which is coming across how you can communicate over a speech-based language, right? So text-to-speech. So these are basically a lot of those use cases where multilingual Indian languages plays an important role, and that's where exactly our strength is. So whenever your solution and you're talking about, you need to make it available for various set of local Indian languages part of it, you can very well go and start leveraging our AI services. That's where exactly we bring a lot of value add and all, and this can be pretty much embedded to each and every application usage perspective. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll just quickly, um, I'll just probably end my discussion where uh, if any of you want to try or intend to start using Microsoft as your perspective, we do have various programs available right now. We can start, in fact, free, where you get $200 of credit, which you can leverage for using or <coughs> leveraging some of the Azure services perspective. Beyond that, if you need to go and probably deploy some of those Vazar Labs application capability standpoint, please reach out to my colleague, um, Sumit. Um, I'm just sharing his coordinates as well. We do have various programs available where we work closely with Vasar Labs and probably if you have a specific requirement, you want to roll out a pilot POC, uh, we may come across and probably look at some terms of <coughs> a way how we can actually onboard this particular application for your project requirement perspective. So I think that's what I want to summarize. And uh, thanks a lot, um, Vasar Lab, Amit, uh, for giving us this opportunity to be present here. Over to you, Amit. Thank you, Hari. Thank you, Hari. A lot of uh, insights. It's like, you know, sometimes it feels like a lot of power-packed information has been put inside uh, one hour. And now we will switch to QA before concluding the session. So we have a couple of questions in chat box, and I request all the attendees who have any concern, queries, want to know, know more, just put inside the QA or raise your hand, and we will have an interactive discussion. So meanwhile, I will, I will start the something which I have just... Uh, so there is one question from Arvind Kumar, who is asking how do... How do you ensure imagery of sensitive and strategic location due to security concern of the state? Is it accessible? Partha, I would like to have understanding from you on this, that how Planet Edge uh, ensuring the security of sensitive regions and how they are managed inside the satellite imagery of the project. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the question. Yeah, that's a uh, good question. And the thing is that in India, the satellite imagery uh, distribution is completely monitored by government of India organization, actually is a part of uh, Indian Space Research Organization. 
This is National Remote Sensing Center in Hyderabad. So they are the monitoring agency. So whatever the imagery, uh, plan, not only planet, any uh, private space company is distributing in India, that everything will go through that National Remote Sensing Center. So they are taking care of all sensitiveness and all these things. So if it is sensitive, they hide this information and deliver. If it is not sensitive, directly they are delivering. So they are the agency. So they are looking after all these things. Thank you. Thank you, Partha, for the, for the answer. So meanwhile, I would like to understand from Hari, because we have a lot of uh, people in this uh, webinar from academia side also and from the government side who might not have been exposure to Microsoft Cloud right now. So is there anything where they can basically learn and explore the Microsoft Cloud without you know bearing any additional cost? Or can it be provided for free to our attendees? I mean, absolutely, uh, yes. In fact, uh, this is one of the initiatives which we are driving across India, uh, enabling each and every individual to learn newer technologies, right? So if you go to Microsoft, learn.microsoft.com, it's, I'm just, Again, saying it's learn, L-E-A-R-N dot Microsoft.com. Uh, you will see various set of free courses available, which each individual can go. Now, again, uh, you will probably look at the track of a developer. You would look at the track of probably I want to be a web security or uh, defense, uh, cyber defense professional I want to become, right? Or probably a DevOps uh, profession, right? I think there are multiple options available. And um, you can just take that particular learning path. It takes through various courses and post that courses. You also have industry led <coughs> certification available. So you can just complete the certification, which will help you to get a very commendable job from an industry perspective. So that's what uh, we have been launching in India. So I would leverage everyone to go and start take, using those free trainings available in learn.microsoft.com. That's great, Harry. It's nice to listen. Even, you know, I will also join it. So, uh, Partha, there is a, there, I would like to learn more about, uh, we, even we have a question from our attendees as well, like what is the resolution of multispectral imagery of a SkySat and uh, is there like the atmospheric correction or surface reflectance, all those things are auto-corrected or there is something post-processing things happen on the platform itself, how these things are taken care? Yeah, so uh, Planet uh, SkySat multispectral imagery it is captured, it's submitted, exact resolution is uh, around 81 centimeter for multispectral. So as I mentioned already, so that means it is uh, containing the more spatial details. So that can be used for AIML purpose because it is captured in sub, uh, submitted resolution 81 centimeter. And uh, regarding the surface reflectance, yes, uh, we generate, we offer the surface reflectance orthorectified and surface reflectance image atmospherically corrected. So, but some of the organization, they want the raw image. So when our subscribe, they, uh, our user will subscribe with Planet, they will get access to the raw imagery. So they can download the raw imagery without any correction and they will get access to the orthorectified imagery. They will get access to the atmospherically corrected surface reflection. So it is completely up to the user which one they want to use. So if they want atmospherically, uh, atmospherically corrected image, yes, directly they can use it. Or if they want to do all these things on their premises using their own infrastructure, own software, they can download raw imagery, they can do that their own. That's the thing. That's great, Partha. So, so how these imagery are available? Is it like uh, they are fetched through API or how the how it will integrate with the other systems around it? Yeah, Planet, uh, we have our uh, GUI based uh, WebGIS kind of uh, uh, application that is we call it as Planet Explorer. So Planet Explorer is a platform, it's a GUI based platform for view, access and download. At the same time, user will get access to the Planet API. So without uh, viewing the imagery, so when the mass download is required, they can directly, they can use the Planet API. They can hit the uh, imagery available in the cloud. Directly, they can download. And during download, if they want to do some analysis or process, so they can do it. And they can get the ultimate, they can get the completely processed imagery. That kind of option is also available with the Planet. So GUI-based Planet Explorer, as well as Planet API, both are available. That's great. Things are getting easier nowadays. So, uh, Prasad, I will have one question for you, which has been asked by Rahul in our uh, webinar. That is there any technology to geotag, monitor, track underground infrastructure assets like water supply, pipeline, sewerage infrastructure? 
Yeah, so again, um, there are technologies available, but it's really more of a ground-based uh, audit that needs to be done. So there are actually vehicles uh, you can actually mount this thing under, uh, where through IR and thermal, it'll actually map up to a few meters. It'll map the underground infrastructure, right? So uh, if if Rahul wants, we can send share the information offline, right? Uh, we can give some pointers in terms of technology and companies who actually do service uh, who uh, captures information for various cities. But sir, so just in the interest of audience, because we have spoken more about the Lewis and the ecosystem around it in terms of infrastructure, in terms of, uh, and even we are just shooting time of the webinar, but I hope that attendees are still interested. So I'd like to know from you, like, what are the journey of Lewis? What kind of problems we have faced while we were deploying the solution on ground? So um, uh, you talk about the problems we have faced while developing the solution, Amit? Yes, in terms of like from technology side, what were the challenges which were faced? Because this is the first of its kind in India. So which are the challenges we basically overcome? During yeah, the so, so in any uh, technology or solution like Lewis, uh, adoption is a key challenge, right? Technology development, obviously, it, it goes through its own cycles, right? It goes its own uh, um, iterations of algorithms and things like that. So we actually, I think, you know, before we even... Um, you know, kind of uh, start the pilots. Uh, we actually did a lot of R and D um, to make sure that the technology was giving us fairly good results before actually you know taken to the field. Uh, the challenge that we actually faced was uh, the trust of the customer, right? You know, how does the customer trust when you raise an alert? Actually, it's an alert, right? So actually, when we dubbed the first iteration, we were giving okay, here's a 45 alerts that happened last month. Right, and the customer was basically not convinced if those alerts were true or not. Are they false positives, false negatives, all those things? Then we actually developed an audit system for the customer, where these fault alerts are put to audit system, where they can actually see each alert and they'll see three month imagery around the alert. That's basically when the customer got convinced. When it, when we raise an alert, that is ninety nine percent true that actually there is an encroachment. Right, that's number one. Number two. Encroachments doesn't have to be all big buildings. It doesn't have to be all like, you know, several uh, square meter buildings. Encroachment also be huts, could be small, small, uh, and the plant imagery is 50 centimeters, right? So imagine if you have a hut, which is, you know, a few meters, you know, kind of uh, square. So it becomes like a speck on the, on the imagery. So I think, so some of those things we had to overcome, right? We actually had some special processing to identify some of those actually key changes and also eliminate false positives, right? But so those are things, some of the things where we had to do a lot of R and D to identify not only the big buildings but also the smaller, you know, kind of buildings. The third thing is, you know, as Partha was actually showing on his imagery, not everything will be true ortho. The imagery could be slightly slanted, could be, you know, kind of not everything will be true ortho, or not everything will be exactly georeference, right? Even though uh, ORSAC would actually go on georeference, sometimes there will be some offsets. So there, are, so essentially. What happens when you actually have an offset? It looks like a building has moved, right? There's a new building has come up, right? When you look at it from the eye, it doesn't look like a new building, but when you look at it from the system, it looks like a new building, right? So again, there we are actually developing algorithms to actually tackle some of those, you know, kind of key aspects, right? And we're able to handle them, right? But it took us two iterations of learnings uh, to develop the system. No? That that's great, Prasad. That's very insightful journey. So we will conclude this session today. But before we conclude, I want to have a. Uh, uh, concluding remarks from our partner planet and Hari as well. So please, please come up on screen Hari and please provide your closing remarks followed by Partha and then we'll conclude the session today. Hey, thanks. Thanks a lot, uh, Masar Lab. Uh, thanks a lot, Amit, for giving this particular opportunity. And uh, I know it was pretty short, but uh, quite useful, quite interactive and a good amount of questions came across. So we uh, love to be a technology partner. And uh, we also want to highlight in terms of various government requirement perspective, we always adhere to it. So that's where uh, anyone wants to start using our services, we would love to partner with Vasa Labs and come and meet you as well. So that's all from my side. Thanks. Great, Hari. Partha, closing the Yeah, so uh, yeah, definitely uh, it was nice interactive all, all the questions we got. Many, many questions are related to image and directly towards planet and Vasa Lab combination. So that's a good. Uh, and it was very interactive session. 
I enjoyed it and uh, regarding the partnerships, definitely Buzzer Lab and Planet is always the trusted partner that will be mentioned. So thank you and thanks to Buzzer, Microsoft and all the audience who have participated. Thank you. Thanks, Partha. So for, with this, we, have, uh, con we are concluding this chapter of our webinar, which is about monitoring city assets and infrastructure. I really thankful to uh, Prasad, Hari and Partha to take out the time for this webinar and putting the content together to present our audience. And I am especially thankful to all the audience who have taken, you know, multiple steps in terms of registering, joining today and having an interactive session by putting the questions and all those interactive things which we had today. So thanks to all of you. We will share the webinar recording uh, to all of you. And any, uh, I understand a couple of people who are not able to understand and a couple of people due to time we have exceeded, they have been missed the QA part. So you will receive uh, the video from us. And for any information, feel free to reach us or any of our team member or any on reach us on our social media platforms and we will be happy to answer and interact with you. With this, we are concluding it today. Have a good day and uh, best wishes to all of you. Thank you. Stay safe.